Hello, this is Curtis from TI. We're going to be looking at modeling linear relationships today. And in particular, we're going to be looking at making uh, comments about the relationship between two variables. We'll be finding some lines that, that appear to model these equations really well. And we'll look at making those, those lines um, improved and, and making them better models uh, of those relationships and maybe even finding some that we might call really good relationships or really good uh, models of those relationships, okay? So let's get started. We're using a, a lesson from the Texas Instruments uh, Building Concepts uh, files, so you can go to uh, education.ti.com and find that underneath of the Activities tab, Building Concepts, um, and look for this particular file in the Statistics uh, section. Um, and if you'd like to follow along, that'd be great. So on page 1.2, we'll find some instructions for how to interact with page 1.3, and we'll see um, you know, some buttons called draw line, move line, show error, some other things uh, that we'll explore, um, and we'll get to those uh, in a little bit. But there's the instructions for how you can interact with this file if you've got um, a calculator at home or maybe you're using the software and you'd like to, to follow along and, and explore. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to navigate to page 1.3 and let's, uh, let's explore um, some data. So I'm going to select uh, store A um, there and, and notice that it gives me the prices for some uh, things for sale at, at store A and I'm going to also include uh, store B. So I've got uh, prices for store A and prices for store B and the, the dots represent the price of some object um, at each of those two stores. As a matter of fact, if I click on one of those things, I can see that peanuts in store A cost uh, $4.98 and peanuts in store B, the same bag, um, cost $5.89. So just a, kind of a quick way to be able to, to recognize um, those prices. Okay, so let's just make some discovery. Let's make some observations. What are some, some things that you notice about the prices at store A and the prices at store B? You can pause the video and write those down if you like. So one of the things that you probably noticed was that um, as you look at things that are more and more expensive at store A, you can also see that they are more and more expensive at store B. In other words, if I find uh, something uh, at store A that's relatively low priced, I would expect it to be relatively low priced at store B. And the same thing about relatively high priced. If it's relatively high priced at store A, it will probably also be relatively high priced at store B, just um, considering that that prices increase, right? So we would call that uh, something like um, positively correlated. So we might say uh, that those two things are positively correlated. I'm going to use a plus sign for that, but we might say positively, um, positively correlated. Okay. Now, you may have noticed a number of other things, but um, what I want you to do is I want you to try uh, pressing the draw line button um, and talk just for a second or think just for a second about what you what you notice about uh, the line and, and those points um, and their relationship uh, to that line. You may have noticed that the equation of the line is that uh, B or the prices at store B are equal to 1A. In other words, we're saying that um, this is the line where all of the prices uh, are exactly equivalent. Um, and so I want you to think for just a second, what does it mean for the prices um, to be above the line? And what does it mean for the prices to be below the line? Now you might be thinking to yourself, oh, well, the prices tend to be uh, above that line, which which means that that um, store B tends to choose or tends to choose to price their things um, a little bit higher than the prices at um, at store A, with the exception of this one thing, ketchup. Uh, it looks like ketchup uh, tends to be a little bit priced a little bit cheaper there at um, at store. Um, store B rather than at store A. So um, that's one possibility. Um, you might have noticed that. 
Okay, so now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to uh, hover over the line using the, um, the arrow key and see if you can move the line to what you think um, models the relationship between um, the prices at store A really well and the prices at store B really well. Now I want you to think about what you notice um, as you move that line and what options you have. So I'm going to move the line just a little bit. So I've stopped my line at uh, 1.2a, and you may have stopped yours um, at a slightly different uh, number, but I, I, I think this looks like a pretty pretty nice model for um, the relationship between this prices at store A and the prices at store B. But I want you to, to talk to me just a second um, about what you think that 1.2 represents. So interpret that for me. So you probably came up with that for every $1 uh, a, an item costs at store A, it will cost $1.20 at store B. And that's exactly what your line does. It predicts that for every $1 at store A, it's going to predict uh, a price of $1.20 at store B. Now what you can do is you can use that uh, line to predict the price uh, of certain items at store B. So for example, um, perhaps at store A, uh, a certain item, I don't know, say costs uh, $2.50. So um, at store A, I say um, I have something that costs $2.50. Then if I want to figure out what the price would be at store B, I'm going to make a guess, use my line to predict um, the cost of that item at store B. And so if I multiply uh, 1.5 time, or sorry, 2.5 times 1.2, I'm going to get $3. Um, and so at store B, I would expect that the price of something that costs $2.50 at store A would be $3 at store B. So so I'll go over here and I'll look at my prices um, at store A and find something $2.50. Ah, here's one. $2.50 for crackers at store A. So if I um, take and I, I click on that, I can show the error for my crackers is one cent. Now you might notice that that negative sign um, out in front of the error. Think about that for just one second as you can see the price for crackers at store B. Now you might notice that the price at store B that I predicted was $3 based on my model and I see um, an error of negative one cent, which means that um, the actual price of crackers at store B was one cent below the price um, that my line predicted for store B. So you might also be able to go through and, and look at some other error messages. In fact, you can click on uh, these individually and see one that may be, be above. So for cereal, $3.52, um, my line predicts something that is uh, 57 cents below what the actual price of the cereal at store B is, $4.79. So um, you can see that when the error is positive, that my line has predicted something that is too small. And when the error is negative, as with the uh, crackers, then my line has predicted uh, a value that is slightly too high, and so my error is negative. Now in just a moment, we'll um, continue exploring this with a different problem, and we'll see how we can use those errors to help us um, improve our models and make a better predictions um, than just by the eye. Okay, so let's jump over to page uh, 2.2 and explore a different relationship um, and see how we can use these errors to help us improve our models. So on page 2.2, you'll find that we have um, the bite force in PSI of some alligators and crocodiles um, listed here against their body mass. So body mass is going to be our predicting variable, something that we're going to use to predict the bite force um, in PSI. Now, just this before, we'll press the draw line 
command here, and you might notice that we do have a positive uh, relationship or a positive correlation between these two. So when we press um, that uh, draw line, we'll expect to see um, we'll expect to see uh, a vertically increasing line um, as we go out in body mass. So think for just a second what you uh, notice about the relationship there and how you can tie that to the equation that you see. Um, for example, you see that uh, force is um, 3.42 times the measurement in mass uh, plus 200. Or at least that's the equation um, that's written there. So... Um, you can kind of note that how come we have a, a positive uh, relationship. We have a positive slope there and a positive uh, y-intercept um, for those, and that's reflected here uh, in that equation. Okay, so you can see that we have, uh, have this line here. Um, and you might notice that on this page, um, we have both the ability to change um, a y-intercept as well as uh, the slope of the line. So um, go ahead and fit your line um, to the data as best, uh, as best you can um, and what you feel like is the best fit line for that data. So I'm going to I'm going to just put um, put my equation maybe something like that. Um, but the question we're investigating here is you know, just how good a fit a line is this and, and how can we maybe improve the fit uh, of this line? How can we quantify um, the fit for this line? And so you might think uh, about the errors. And you'll notice that um, we have a whole bunch of errors that we could talk about. So we could click on each one of these guys um, and explore each of their errors. And somebody might suggest, oh, well, look, we could take um, this crocodile's error and add it to the error predictions for all of the rest of the crocodiles. And we would get a total sum uh, of our errors. So we could take that, that negative 482, um, negative 482, um, and add to that. Um, you know, another, the next one up, which is uh, 133.4. Um, so we can add um, 133.4, and we could go on through the whole process of doing that for, for all of these. But you would notice that, you know, the negative ones and the positive ones might uh, cancel out. So what sort of strategy might you have to um, take care of the fact that our negatives and positives are going to kind of cancel out, and we may end up with a relatively small number? And you might have um, decided that maybe what we could do is take the magnitudes or, or the absolute value of each of those and add all of those up. So if I look at all of the segments um, and I look at, at the absolute value of the length of each one of these segments, um, then I might be able to get uh, a sum that, that would quantify uh, the total amount of errors. As a matter of fact, the sum of absolute deviations is what that's called, the SAD. Um, we can show uh, the sum of those absolute deviations all the way across here. So we can look at the sum of absolute uh, deviations for this particular line. And then we can mess around with the, uh, the line itself and see if we can't um, get that to be uh, a smaller value. Because what we're trying to do is get the smallest amount of total deviation uh, from this line. So let's try playing with that for just a minute. Okay, so I was able to, to minimize mine uh, to a relatively small value. You may have been able to get it a little bit smaller, but now you've got kind of a feel for uh, what it means to look at a line um, and try to assess the fit of that line by looking at the sum of the absolute deviations uh, about that line. Okay. So now you can go and um, take your exploration on to page um, 3.2 and explore um, this common um, board game um, and some prices uh, of the spaces on each of those common board games and the distance 
uh, from Go and check out that linear relationship and, and go further in this exploration and see how you can assess the line there.